Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can easily create custom data validators using Vapor, a popular server-side Swift framework. Vapor comes with a large amount of built-in validators, including things like checking if it's alphanumeric characters, checking if it's a valid email address, checking counts of things, and so on. In this screencast, I'm gonna show you three things. First, I'm going to show you how you can combine a set of validators together. Second, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own custom validators. And third, I'm going to show you two alternate ways that you can validate data other than using the valid generic. Let's start validating. I have a Vapor project here that has some routes demonstrating the built-in validators. Let's create a new route here called combine that combines a few of these together. I'll look for a parameter called input, cast it as a string and abort if it's not there. Then I'll call validated on this raw input. And in the by, I can actually combine different validators. All I have to do is pass in the first validator I want to use, count.min in this case, which will check that the length of the string is at least 10 characters. And then I can use and to and it with another validator, only alphanumeric in this case. And actually, as you see here, I can use not on the only alphanumeric to do the opposite of that validator. In other words, to require that there's at least one non-alphanumeric character. If I build and run, at first I'll try entering in a short string, and it fails validation. Now I'll make it longer, but it fails again because it fails the second validator, which says there has to be at least one non-alphanumeric character. So I'll add a few of those, try again, and it works. You may have noticed that one of the drawbacks of using the validated by overload is that you're losing a little bit of validation safety. For example, imagine that you validate that an input field has a minimum length of 10 in two different spots in your code. Later, you update the validated by in one part of your code to be eight characters instead of 10, but you forget to update the other one. Now you could potentially have some inconsistent data. To resolve this problem, and also to give you the opportunity to build in behaviors that don't ship with Vapor, Vapor allows you to build your own custom validator. To see how this works, let's create three validators for three common things you might have in a web app. Something to validate a user's name, something to validate a user's email address, and something to validate a user's password. I'll make a new directory called validation here, and I'll create three new files in that directory for my three validators. Then I'll regenerate my Xcode project. Let's open emailvalidator.swift and create a new class that derives from validation suite. Validation suite conforms to validator and it's how all of the existing validators that we've been using so far are implemented. This just requires a single method called validate and it takes an input string and it can throw. This first validator will be a very simple validator that would just combine two other validators, the email validator and the count validator to check that it's between a six and 64 characters. After combining the two validators, I can just call validate. Next, let's open passwordvalidators.swift and enter the same boilerplate as before. This time, let's create some fully custom validator behavior. I'll create a regex to make sure that the password contains at least one number and at least one uppercase character. Don't worry if you don't understand the regex syntax here. If you're curious about it, search for NS regular expression cheat sheet on Google. If the range isn't found, it will be nil, so I'll throw an error in this case. Finally, I'll open namevalidators.swift and put in the standard boilerplate. This time, I'll do a combination of the two. I use a built-in validator to check the length, and I'll also add some custom code to run a regular expression to make sure that the name contains only letters, spaces, and a few other characters that are common in names. Back in main.swift, let's add a few routes to test these out. They work exactly the same way as built-in validators. You use the valid generic type, setting the type parameter to the validator to use. If I build and run, I can try entering in an invalid email and it fails validation, and a valid email that passes. Similarly, I can enter an invalid password that fails, and now a valid one that passes. Finally, I can enter an invalid name that fails, and a valid one that passes. There's one last thing I want to show you. Sometimes you might not want to use these valid classes that we've been using that are intended to provide your code some level of validation safety. Sometimes you don't need that and you just want a simple check, maybe a true false to see if it passed or failed, or maybe just a check that throws if there's an error but doesn't mess with the data. 
You can do this in Vapor with two methods called passes and tested. Let's take a look. Let's create a new route to test out passes and read the input parameter as a string. I'll simply call passes on the raw input and pass in the validator to use, and it will return to me either a true or false based on whether it validated. Let's create one final route called tested and read the input parameter as a string again. This time I'll call tested and pass in a validator. But instead of returning a true or false like passes or returning a valid generic like validated does, tested here will just return the same raw input that I pass in or it will throw an error if validation failed. Let's try these out. I'll build and run and I'll try calling passes by passing in a bad password. Note that it returns false. If I send in a good password, it returns true. Now let's see how tested works. If I send in a bad password, it doesn't return false, it throws an error. And if I send in a good password, it simply returns the same string. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to combine and create your own custom validators using Vapor. In the next screencast, we're going to use some of the validators we created here in real world model objects, complete with parent-child relationships. All this talk about customs has reminded me of the one time where Putin visited the airport and the customs officer asked him, occupation? And Putin said, no, just visiting. All right, I'm out. <laughs>